If you take out a copy of God's Word and turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we'll be looking at a, a few specific verses, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13 and 15 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who will sleep, so that you will not grieve, as do the rest who have no hope. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so that we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So tonight as we come to this beautiful story, signs of his coming, signs of his coming. Are there signs concerning the return of Jesus? How can we know them? Well, last time we met, we considered the blessed hope of the Christian uh, and the personal return of Christ and that he will return first in the air for his own. This is what we just read in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, because the next thing in God's program is, which is imminent, Christ will return and he will appear in the air and though the dead in Christ will rise and those of us who are alive will be caught up in the air, we'll, get, we'll be with the Lord forever. That's the next thing to happen. Then Christ again will return the second time. Well, this time he'll feet, his feet will touch the ground. That's for later. Now, as we consider these things, we see that uh, in the book of Jude, tells, uh, verse 14 tells us, but Enoch in the, sev in the seventh generation from Adam also prophesies about these men, saying, behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones. In Zechariah 14, verse 4, and in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. This is what I was referring to earlier which is in front of Jerusalem on the east uh, and at the Mount of Olives, will be split in its middle from east to west. Think of that. Jesus' feet will touch Mount Olive. I've never been to Israel, but that's one of the things I would like to do. And at that time, he's, that's power. Because he come, he's going to split a mountain. I have power. I can split a piece of paper. <laughs> I can take a pencil and, but think of that. A mountain will split. That would produce some kind of earthquake. And the half of the mountain will move toward the north and the other half toward the south. Wow. Now, and we go back in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 1 tells us, they also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? Because Jesus just went up. He defied gravity in his glorified body. He's going back home. Then Jesus, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven. Now, consider this for a second. You've been in airplanes before. You get that 40,000 feet up in the air, you can't breathe. You can't. But Jesus didn't go up there. He had no oxygen tank on his back. He had nothing. But he had a glorified body. And that's what you will have when you meet him in the air. How are you going to leave planet Earth? You know how much energy it takes for one of those rockets to leave, to defy gravity and to make it up there? That's a lot. But Jesus will take us as well. 
Again, Dr. Luke tells us Jesus will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Listen, when one reads that John, what John describes about the return of Jesus Christ, and John says it is imminent, it can happen anytime. So the relevancy of the book of Revelation 2 becomes very relevant and very apropos, if I may use a little French here, to all ages. And we have to know. Because the purpose is not to provide discomfort, but it is to exhort Christians to godliness and light of the any moment return of the Lord. Now, is there a way in which we can receive guidance as to when Jesus will come? We would, of course, be foolish and wrong to try to f fix the date, days, and hours of his return. I've been debating this, but I think I'm going to do it. My name is not Howell Camping, and I have no dates for you. I'm sorry. But Scripture tells us, Zechariah 14:7, it will be a unique day, which is known to Yahweh. It's interesting, Zechariah 14:7, it will be a unique day, which is known to Yahweh. Neither day nor night, but it will be that at evening time there will be light. Wait a minute, at evening time there is light? It's a day that is unique. It's neither day or night. What kind of day is this? It's a day because when he comes, once you step out of time, there is no more clock. It's eternity. So there is no night. Matthew 24, 26 tells us, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Mark 13, 32, but of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses have used that, aha, you see, Jesus is not God. Uh, not a bunch of people we can't, who are reading the Bible upside down. What is Jesus? Why come Jesus made the statement? He doesn't know. Well, in his humanity, he limited, he, 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 he imposed some limitation on himself. And that was one of the things. He didn't know at that time. But now he knows everything. Otherwise, he's not God. That's simple to explain. Very simple. Because in his ministry on planet Earth, he set aside his glory. And part of it, he, he, he set aside his glory. He, he, he restricted himself in that sense. Again, okay, go back to the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? Because understand this, the, 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 the teaching was Messiah will come and he will restore the kingdom. Again, theologians do the teaching saying it's like they've seen two mountains and they see one here, another one there, and they could not tell, they couldn't differentiate how far these two mountains were. So there is a gap that exists between these two and they couldn't tell how long. They wanted to know when is he come to establish the kingdom. It was still in their minds after the resurrection. They wanted to know. But what did Jesus tell them? But he said to them, it's not for you to know <laughs> times or seasons which the Father has set by his own authority. Uh, now Jesus doesn't say, I don't know. Isn't that interesting? Earlier in Mark and in Matthew, the Son of Man, not even the Son of Man, now he doesn't say he doesn't know. You have to see, appreciate these nuances as you read scripture. What is said, what is omitted, because for him to say he didn't know at this time in his glorified body would have made him a liar, because he does know. But the Father set a time in his own authority. In other words, you have a mission. I'm sending you on a mission. Go fulfill the mission. Don't worry about the time. 
So the Word of God mentions certain signs and indications that are nearing the end of the, the present age. The scripture gives us plenty of signs to contemplate. Your Bibles are still open. Look at Luke 21, verse 28. Luke 21, 28. But when these things begin to take place, hmm, when these things begin to take place, what do we do? Hide under the bed? No, that's not what Luke tells us. Straighten up and lift up your heads. Why? Because your redemption is drawing near. It's time to go. What things? That's a good question. Well, the Lord Jesus, the Old Testament prophets, and the apostles all foretold that certain events will take place on planet Earth and in the church, which will proclaim the second advent. Just as the appearance of John the Baptist was the sign that Jesus the Messiah was about to be revealed the first time, if you look at Isaiah 43, a voice calling, prepare the way of Yahweh in the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. So today, the presence of certain obvious signs in the church and in the world tells us that the second coming is near in that end. Now, let me be clear, extremely clear. Let me be specifically clear. There are no signs connected with the rapture of believers, which is the first phase of the return of Christ. The coming of the Lord in the air for the saints is always proposed as the imminent hope of the church. This is the blessed hope Titus talks about. Philippians 3, 3.20 tells us, for our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. See, those of you who were born here, you have no idea what your citizenship means. People would kill and have killed to get that citizenship. People have lied. People have done, committed evil atrocities to be a US citizen, to have papers so they can be in this country without the fear of immigration, of being de deported or sent back to their homeland. People from other countries, they put value on this citizenship because it cost them something. What I'm saying to you, our citizenship is way better. <laughs> it's more, it's priceless. And we eagerly await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 1.10 tells us, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Again, the tribulation time is called uh, uh, the, the, the wrath of God unleashed on the world. Or the times of Jacob, if you will. But that's not what we are destined for. We are not destined for wrath. Because we, uh, uh, sin's problem has been taken care of at the cross. Again, signs only have to do with his return in power and glory to reign as the son of man. But seeing that the coming of the Lord for his people must precede, must precede his coming with, with his people, it follows that the signs of his return in glory are shaping themselves visibly before our eyes and tell us that his return is not far off. The rapture must, must be much nearer. If we take our Bibles and make a careful study of the scriptures, references presented below, as we will discuss, you will discover three things. And these are the three points I intend to argue this evening. The first, the world signs. The two, the church signs. And number three, the Jewish signs. They all proclaim the Lord's coming to be near at end. Let's consider these three points. Let's begin with number one, the world signs. 
Number one, they got some other sub points as there as well. So it, number one, it, it, an increase of sin and lawlessness in circumstances similar to the days of Noah and Lot. Hmm. Notice the warning Paul gave some centuries ago about this time. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. But notice that on the last days, last days, what's all of the last days? Ever since Jesus came, we've all been living on the last days. Difficult times will come. Hmm? And Paul had difficult days. And we are still under difficult days. Well, what do you have in mind, Paul? What would these days look like? Paul tells us, for men will be lovers of selves. Hmm. There's a lot to say there, but I'm going to leave it all alone. <laughs> lovers of money. Do people love money now? Hmm. Boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parent. Listen to this generation, the kind of music do they listen to. Do, they, do that really show these kids have respect for their parents, their mothers? Disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, without gentleness, without love for good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness but having denied its power. Paul concludes by keep away from such men as these. And I like to argue many of these men are leaders in the church. Why would we keep away from them? If they are outside, why would we need to worry about them? It's because they are in the church. You got false teachers. Again, just because a guy preached a good message one day, that doesn't mean he's consistent in scripture. Even a, a clock who's, which has no battery in it gives good time twice a day. Luke 17, 26 to 30. And just as in the days of Noah, and so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. What were they doing in the days of Noah? They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It, it was the same in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, selling, they were planning, they were building. But on that day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be the same on the day the Son of Man is revealed. Now, how was it in the days of Noah? Genesis 6.11 tells us. Genesis 6.11. Now, the earth was corrupt. Wait a minute. Creation took place in... We got Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, 4, 5, and 6. And in Genesis 6, this is God's assessment of, the, of humanity. The earth was corrupt. Wow. Before God. It's not my evaluation. God's own assessment. The earth was corrupt. And the earth was filled with violence. So what did that do? He flooded. He destroyed the world. How about 2024? How is it today in our world? How much time do you have? <laughs> uh, okay, let, let, let's consider this. New York City. The rotten apple. Uh, yes. Someone the other day cut an 11-year-old girl in the face because this man had nothing better to do. This wasn't a kid who was looking for trouble. This kid is walking home. Cut. Now, there's a new game in New York City when you get into the subway. People push you in front of an incoming train. Okay, what kind of mind think of these things? They arrested a young man some years back. It was his 18th birthday. They arrested him that night. And they asked him, why did you do it? 
Well, it was my 18th birthday and I wanted to kill someone. This is lawlessness. There is no fear of police, no respect for human life. How about abortion? How many children America has killed thus far? Homosexuality. Pure evil. Violence. Now, I don't really follow the news in Haiti and I don't listen to any station that gives news because I don't want to be upset. But there is a gang leader in Haiti. His name is Barbecue. I mean, I find it strange that somebody's name is called Barbecue. And one person told me, you know why he has this name? And I'm like, no. It's because he loves to burn people. Burn people. Therefore, the nickname Barbecue. So how is our world today? <laughs> We're not doing any better than the people from of old. Number two, great national distress, perplexity and fear. Luke 21, 25, and there will be signs on the suns and the moons and the star in the earth, anguish among nations in perplexity and the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaking. Now, remember when many, so about a decade or so ago, there were asteroids that hit Jupiter and were able to catch some of these pictures because of the uh, telescope we have in space. We're able to see some of these things. And they were saying, like, if this happened in planet Earth, they don't think they would life would be possible. But because of the telescope we have in space, we're able to see some of these things. And now we know, you know, if you got a science book when you went to school, it's worthless. Why? Because the number of galaxies and stars that are up there, you can't number them. But scripture said that, <laughs> if you have to take time to read scripture. When they told you there were nine planets and we only have a few galaxies, they lied. They can more than that. So things are being revealed to us. It's like, wow. We learned that without sun, nothing can grow. But the other day, scientists discovered at the bottom of the sea, this plant is able to grow. Photosynthesis. I learned that in science. That's probably the only thing I remember in science. Wait a minute. You need light to have photosynthesis. But this thing is able to grow deep underwater without light. How do we explain it? Oh, in the beginning. If you remove that from the equation, you get the Big Bang. And if you get the equation, anything goes. No. In the beginning, God created. Also, we have the fear of nuclear war. I don't want to shock you, but you need to be aware of this. Mankind has used every weapon it has created. The nuclear weapon, we did the atomic bomb in Japan, and Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But the nuclear power, there are many nations on planet Earth that, who, who possess this weapon. And some, many of them are, uh, uh, will deny that they have it. But there is one country in the Middle East who's been searching to get this weapon for years. Iran wants the nuclear weapon. What's their goal with having the nuclear weapon? They have said it before, they said it so many times, and people think, oh no, they're not gonna do that. They wanna wipe Israel off the face of the earth. That's their intent. 
They have never been shy about this. That's their goal. Hmm. Another sign, deception. Matthew 24, 5 and 6. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Then you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed, for these things must take place. But that is not yet the end. Do you know in the last probably decade or a few, maybe 20, 30 years, we had more wars in the last two decades than all the previous 20 centuries combined? Second Peter 3.10, I love this. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its work will be found out. This planet, again, this is the result of nuclear war. This planet is gonna vaporize, it's gonna disappear. As one preacher put it, this planet is a disposable planet. When God doesn't want it anymore, he will dispose of it. Again, when your environmentalist friends tells you, we got to protect the planet, have him read this. Because when God doesn't need this planet anymore, he's going to do away with it. Because your death, you, 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 God's plans for you is not to be here. God's plans for you is the new Jerusalem. Yes, we take care of things because which is the normal thing to do. But the environment should not become a religion. We, we don't worship the created things, but we worship the creator. Also, we see famine, pestilence, and earthquakes. Again, Matthew 24 tells us, nation and nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. The other, that was a couple, a few months ago, we had a little earthquake in New Jersey, and people were like, did you hear the earthquake? Did you feel it? Did you? It became great news, and it was not a major one. If you live in California, you live in Japan, you're more familiar to earthquake. They deal with them a lot. But this is gonna be uh, uh, more consistent. Also, you see labor problems, strikes, and uh, a widespread, you know, commercial and, and industrial unrest. Again, this thing we were foretold. Look at Zechariah 8, 10, so for before those days, there were no wages for men or any wage for animal. And for him who went out or care or came, and, he, and there was no peace because of the adversary. And I set men against another. Wow. James chapter 5, 4 tells us, James chapter 5, Behold, the pay of the laborers who moved your field, that which you have been withheld, by you cries out to me, and you are the cries, and the outcries of those who did the harvesting have reached the ears of Yahweh of hosts. People work and they don't get paid. And now what do we do? We think we're going to raise the minimum, the, 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 what people make, the uh, cost of, and the cost of living cannot keep up with what people are getting paid. Have you been to, you been to McDonald's lately? <laughs> Try to buy a Big Mac? <laughs> you, you need a credit card. <laughs> You can't go in there with cash because every day it's a surprise. It goes up. Again, an amazing increase in travel and knowledge. Oh, now this is the kicker here, okay? Long ago, where was the information stored? In books. You put it on paper. Anything you wanted to conserve, you would put it on paper. And guess what? The computer, computer age changed all that. Your smartphone you have today is more powerful. Think of that, 1969, when NASA sent the Apollo 11, the guidance computer board NASA sent up there, your cell phone is, has more power than what NASA sent up there in 1969. Now, with that in mind, 
Daniel 12, 4 said, but as for you, Daniel, conceal this word and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. Knowledge will increase. And it's amazing. A fourth grader right now doesn't need a teacher anymore. Whoa, I can't believe you just said that. Think of that. Siri, <laughs> or Alexa, <laughs> anything they want to know, all they got to do is ask. Why do they need a teacher? I know I'm putting myself out of a job. Now, in Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, this is an interesting verse. The shields of, many, of, of his mighty men are colored red, and the valiant men are dressed in scarlet, and the chariot are enveloped in flashing steel. When he is set up to march, and the, cyp and the cypress spears are brandished. Again, there, there is an imagery here of, of men who, who, whose clothes have been bloodied, and these men are, are fighting a, a, a war. Again, some people worry about Israel. Why? Because of iron. And iron is closer to having the nuclear bomb than it's ever been. Consider Isaiah 31, verse 5. Like flying birds, so Yahweh of hosts will defend Jerusalem. Huh. Will defend Jerusalem. He will defend and deliver it. He will pass over and provide a way of escape. Same book, chapter 60, verse 8. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like the doves to their nest? Interesting verse. Again, when you're sending bombs and different things up in the air, it look like birds because they're so high, you can't even tell what they are. But Yahweh will defend Israel. Also, we notice that there's an accumulation of wealth. People have so, um, there are more millionaires and billionaires ever, more than ever in our history of the world. Even Christians, there are many wealthy Christians. But James tells us money shouldn't control us, but we should control money and we should do good with the money that we have. Also, we see there's much talk about peace in the holding of peace conferences. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 3, Now concerning the times of the season, brothers, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For yourself know full well that the Lord of the Lord will become just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will call, call upon them suddenly, like labor pains upon a woman who is pregnant, and they will never escape. See, you see, all these things are signs of the world. And they give evidence that we're closer to the return of Christ. And number two, the signs, the church signs. They are church signs from the church. Really? What are they? Number one, the increase of, of apostasy. False teachers. Your Joel Osteen crowd, your T.D. Jakes, and your women preachers are the judgment of God on the people. Why? To see if you love God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no one in any way deceive you. For it has not come unless the apostasy come first and the men of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Peter is, I mean, Paul is, lays this out clearly in 1 Timothy 4.1. For the Spirit explicitly says that in a lot of times, some will come, some will fall away from the faith. In other words, they will apostatize and, and paying attention to deceitful spirit and doctrine of demons. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 
3 and 4. For the time will come while they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. And they will turn their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. So you part, number two, hypocrisy in much empty profession. 2 Timothy 3.5, holding on to a form of godliness, but having denied its power. These people pretend to know God, but they don't know God at all. And next point we hear, we see it's the lukewarmness in the church. There are people who are not, who are not cold. That's why Jesus warned in Matthew 24, 12, and because of, of lawlessness is multiplied, most people's love will grow cold. Hmm. Idea, same idea in Revelation 3, in the, uh, 14 and 16, in the angel of the, uh, the church in Laodicea writes, this is what the amen, this is what the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of creation, God says, I know your deeds. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because of you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. It's people who can't stand for nothing. So they will fall for everything. Also, we see many will revile the truth. Again, this is in the church, not from the outside. We saw the outside already, 2 Peter 3, 4, knowing that first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own loss, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. See, the very fact they are making this argument it's a sign of prophecy because Peter wrote this some 2,000 years ago. False prophet, again, is a, a, a great increase in false religion and the occult. How many religions are in the world? We can keep up right now because they, they, they are getting created. Uh, when we were at a uh, Shepherd's Conference, they had a, a, a new te terminology, deconstruct. They, they wanted to deconstruct certain things in Christianity. And there are people on, online, and that's all they do. I used to be, but now I, I deconstruct. So I, I, I don't like what is being said. Jesus could not have said all these words because Jesus is a nice guy. Really? The mystery of lawlessness in 2 Timothy chapter 2 is already at work. Already at work. And people just don't pay attention. But there are signs. 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2. But false prophet also arose among the people. Again, how do we know he is a false prophet? Because what he teaches doesn't square with scripture. How are you going to know false prophet? What they say versus what's in, written in the word, and you're going to examine it. Just, just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. And many will follow their sensuality, and, be, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. Again, your T.D. Jakes crowd, they tell you that the Holy Spirit is a force. And there are so many atrocities they believe about the Holy Spirit. Where do they get these things from? And many people follow these people. Much persecution of the, uh, of the faithful ones. <laughs> Much persecution of Christian. Christian cr true Christian. The other day I saw that 60, they, they, these guys went into a Christian church in some African country and they just killed a whole bunch of Christians. Because Jesus, one of that in Matthew 24, verses 9 and 10, they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. 
and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. People will kill and say, you know what? Uh, we're doing God a favor by killing you. And they think it's worship to God. But it's not. They will bring you, you know what? This type of persecution has not arrived in America, but there are certain things that are taking place. And if they do fall in place, we're going to know these things, these things in this country. Because it happened every place else except here. How dare someone tells you, I can go, I'm the governor, and I can go in a BLM march on a Sunday morning, but you can't go to church and sing. That's a no-no. That's crossing a line that never was crossed before in America. The next one is worldwide evangelism. That itself is a sign. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. It's a sign. The gospel must be proclaimed to all nations. And guess what? I don't know how far about we are, but one thing I do know, we were a lot closer than we were yesterday. <laughs> because of radio, the internet, and so many people who have taken the gospel in training local people so they can go and train and do likewise. We are closer. And by that very fact, we know the church sign proclaimed the nearness of the Lord's return. And for our last point, the Jewish signs. Jewish sign, yes, there are some Jewish signs. Luke 20, 21, 29 to 23. Then he told me a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees, as soon as they, they put, for, put forth leaves and you see it for yourself, know that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Wow. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. In this passage, our Lord compares the Jewish nation to a fig tree. And he tells us that when the fig tree begins to bud and bear fruit, we may be sure that his coming is near at hand. Again, the budding of the fig tree has taken place. Or is taking place, if you will. Since 1948, the, Jewish, the Jews have been returning to Israel in fulfillment of many prophecies. Jews are being persecuted everywhere. Now, you would think you spend thousands of dollars, you send your child to school to be educated, and all of a sudden, I don't know where, they can go to school and you spent thousand they're not even safe in school so what do you think many of these jews are doing with the october 7 uh, atrocities many jewish men went home went back home to fight left businesses you name it they left everything they went to fight when I, God says, I'm going to bring them home, he's going to create a situation in which they will go home. Because if you're not safe in university, you're not safe in America, you're not safe in Europe, you're not safe in Africa, you're not safe in, North Amer in South America, where do they go? But God did say, I'm going to bring you home, Isaiah 11, 11 and 12. Then it will be in that day that the Lord will again acquire the second time what is in the remnant of his people who will remain from Assyria, Egypt, Pethros, Ethiopia, Elam, Sinai, Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. They're going to go home. Ezekiel 36, 24. And I will take you from the nations. Oh, See, these words are there for us. They were written for our learning. I will take you from the nations, gather you from the lands, and bring you into your own land. 
Ezekiel 37, 21. And speak to them, thus says the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the son of Israel from among the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. Jeremiah 23, 3 to 8. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the land where I have banished them. Oh, who caused it? God, because of disobedience. Remember, they rejected the Messiah. I have banished them and caused them to return to their pasture, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will also raise up shepherds over them, and they will be shepherd, and they will shepherd them. <clears throat> And they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be left unattended, declares Yahweh. Oh, let's get another one. I, uh, Jeremiah 32, 37 to 39. Behold, I will gather them out of the land. Oh. Uh, which I banished them in my anger, in my wrath, and in great indignation. And I will cause them to return to this place and make them inhabit in safety. And they shall be my people. I will be their God. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always from, for their own good and for the good of their children after them. Hmm. Little book of Amos 9, 14, and 15. I will also restore the captivity of my people Israel, and they will rebuild the desolate cities and live in them, and they will also plant vineyards and drink their wine and make gardens and eat their fruit. See, the persecution and hostility that Jews are, are facing will increase. Listen, that's not the end. This is the beginning. It's going to get worse. We'll bring more Jewish back to the homeland of Israel. Jews from all parts of the world have been regathering in the land of Israel. Week by week, month by month, by ship, by plane, many of them are going back. The sons and daughters of Abraham are arriving at ports of Israel. There are wonderful industrial, agricultural, and cultural development in Israel in fulfillment of prophecy. Isaiah 35, 1, 2, and 10. The wilderness and the desert will be delighted. Again, these guys went to Haiti to teach people in Haiti how to grow rice in a part of the country that's desolate. Why? Because they planted rice in the desert, and they, the rice grows. If they can do that there, they can plant rice anywhere. They can do it anywhere. Zechariah 14, 11, and people will inhabit Israel and there will no longer be anything devoted to destruction for Jerusalem will be inhabited in security. <laughs> in security. So when I, anybody in Iran says, you know what, I want to destroy the Zion nation. Pray for their soul because they have no idea who they're messing with. Because God got this. Hosea 3, 4, and 5. For the son of Israel will remain for many days without king or prince. Wow. Think of that. Hosea. They will remain without many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred period. When was the last time they had a sacrifice? When was the last time they had a king? Afterward, the son of Israel will return and seek Yahweh their God and David their king, and they will come and feed to Yahweh and to his goodness in the last days. This is a truly significant Jewish sign that proclaims the nearness, the nearness of our Lord's return. As you study and meditate upon the above scripture, is it not clear that we are living at the end of the present age and that we are justified in believing that the Lord's coming is near? See, this truth is at the same time most glorious and most serious. It is glorious for all who know him and who are trusting him as their Lord and Savior. But it is a terrifying thing for those who do not know him who have never turned to him in repentance and faith. 
So tonight I conclude this time together with the words of Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. Let him return to Yahweh and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Amen.